Wes, welcome to this video. Today we're going to talk about whether you need a 15 to 35 or ultra wide angle lens like this. Or the question is, can you shoot landscape photography with a 50 mil like this? It's easy. It's easy. You're a beautiful person and a good person. And if no one has told you that today, let me be the first person to tell you that. All right, we're here at Cal Poly Pomona and I have this nice soccer field, the mountains in the background. I've kind of got some oak tree over here and some olive tree over here. I don't know, they might be oak, both oak, but that's a nice frame. Let me go back here so you can see what I'm gonna shoot. All right, so tree, field, and kind of dorms and hills and mountains in the background. And then we have the, the uh, tree over here framing it up. We have the camera on the tripod right here. And we're gonna see, can we shoot the same landscape shots with the RF 50 or do we need the 15 to 35? What's the difference? Now this idea comes from the slanted lens who did a video on it and it influenced me to try it. And he got the idea from another photographer. I'll put the name here. Can this little lens stand in for the behemoth, massive, awesome 15 to 35 in landscape photography? That's what we're gonna find out today. Let's go. I'm gonna do a panel of three shots vertically on the 50 mil compared to one single frame horizontally with the 15 to 35. That's the setup. That's what we're gonna compare. All right, the first shot I'm gonna take is I'm gonna take the uh, 1535 and I'm put it on the R5 body right here and power it on. Put it at one over 125, F4, get that focus lined up. Actually, I'm gonna move up so that this uh, concrete wall is not in the shot. Uh, so that's something I already noticed because I had the 50 on before. The 50 shoots over the wall. 15 to 35 is wider. So I'm going to have, I'm going to go ahead and level this. I'm going to pull back to 15 mil and uh, take one shot at F4. One shot at F4 goes from tree on the, the left to tree on the right. And then I'm going to take one at, oh, about 24 mil that barely gets that tree and that tree. All right, that's it. Now let's pop on the 50 mil and see what that looks like. Power off the R5, wait for the little sensor protector to go down, pop off the lens right here, stack it right here, boom, 50 mil, and I'll pop that on there. Now here's the trick, is I'm gonna go vertical. I have the L bracket on, so you can see that right there. On here, there's a nice L bracket so that I have the uh, Swiss Arca plate on the bottom. All right, now, one of the reasons you would do this is to keep your gear simple. That's a benefit. One lens, one camera body, landscape photography, portrait session, food photography. Can this little RF be the jam that makes your kit easy, accessible, portable, and affordable? Let's see. All right, now one of the things we'll notice with the 15 to 35 is it cuts a wide swath along the landscape. Uh, and I'm gonna use an L bracket on the EOS uh, R5. And so right here with the camera kind of close up in the frame, I'm just gonna show how easy it is with the L bracket to switch from landscape right there. Very easy to dial it, uh, dial it out and flip it to horizontal. Now the thing that I noticed is when I shoot like this, um, I got to make sure that I have the ability to flip the screen down far enough because uh, sometimes this adjustment knob is there. Um, and then you want to be able to tighten up so that it's not wobbling. Uh, but everything looks good and that's a very, very easy way to shoot landscape with the 50 mil. And now I have three vertical shots I'm going to take. Power the camera on, of course. And I'm going to go, I'm going to make sure I can turn this from left to right uh, as I want to. Now I'm going to switch to manual focus because I want it locked on because I'm doing multiple shots. I want the same plane of focus, so I'm focusing on the buildings. We lost a little bit of the sunlight, but it's okay. I'm going to hurry. Hit menu. On this lens, there's an option to turn uh, it to manual focus, but you have to use the menu for that. So. I have that, I'm gonna punch in, check focus. That looks good. Now I got the edge of the uh, olive tree. I'm gonna swing to the middle, make sure they have that little nub of the hill. 
right there, uh, which was on the right side of the frame, is on the left side of the frame. Right here is the edge of this white building. I'm going to make sure it's still in the frame there. And I'm going to move the focus box over. Move the focus box over so it's still there. And that is my third shot. Now let's put them in the Lightroom and see how they look. It's a beautiful day out. I just lost the sun, started a little bit too late, uh, but it's good, it's all good. Simple process to merge these in Lightroom. Select the left shot right here, the middle shot and the right shot. And then I'm going to right click and say photo merge and choose panorama. Uh, there's a, uh, a moment where it'll run the software. You can select spherical, and it kind of gives a bend. You can see the fence line here bends. Cylindrical, uh, that has a slightly more uh, taller perspective, or I like this perspective, which is flatter. flatter. So I just hit merge, and then it, you'll see it up here. It's running, it's processing. Uh, the new Mac software also shows a progress bar down here, which is kind of nice because you could be on another program and keep tabs on that. And then you'll see that the final image is right here and everything looks like one shot. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope that you learned you can easily shoot with a 50 mil for great landscape photography using that, uh, that panoramic photo merge option in Lightroom. And so with something as easy and flexible and uh, small and portable to carry as the R, the EOS RP, the R6, the R5, and the 50 mil RF 1.8, you can do some incredible landscape photography. Now, I also have the RF35, I could use that, but I think this is a better example because it's more associated with portrait lengths and it's kind of cool to see that you can use that and get some great, great landscape photos with the portrait lens. 